minutes an hour early, it might get a lot of people. Uh, because that's when people are on their way to work. Uh, I can't even see who's popping on. I don't know what's going on with Periscope. Hey there, Pastor Evangelist. Good morning. God bless you. Now I'm starting to see people. Hey there, Cinder780. Good morning and God bless you. We're going to talk today about why God refuses to bless you. Uh, hey there, Anita. Good morning and God bless you. This is not going to be a popular scope. But then again, none of my scopes are popular. You know, I get like, you know, I'll get like, uh, you know, five or six people or sometimes, I, hey there, Sam Mag, sometimes I'll get like, uh, I think my, my record was 200, but I don't have high audience retention. Uh, because the people who are familiar with my ministry usually are hoping I'll be prophesying. And if I'm not prophesying, they're not interested. Um, it's the same way on Pal Talk. When I used to minister on Pal Talk, if I was prophesying, I'd get 200 people in the Pal Talk room. Um, if I was just teaching or preaching, I'd get four. Uh, either Sam Monchik, I'm not sure if I, or Simon Chick, I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Uh, good morning and God bless you. Let's talk about the blessing of God. Uh, and let's talk about why God doesn't bless people. And, and there's a reason why I titled it the way I titled it. Uh, and, and yes, please invite your followers if you can, uh, if, if you want to. Uh, but we're going to find out why people are not getting blessed and how to solve that problem. Uh, because a lot of the preachers will just tell you, this is how you get blessed. And they teach you something they've been teaching you for 15 or 20 years and you're still not blessed because what they're teaching you isn't the truth. Uh, go figure. Uh, you know, as they say, the, the, uh, the proof is in the pudding. Uh, you know, if you've been in a church and they've been teaching you how to be blessed and you've been doing what they told you for 15 years and you're still not blessed, there's a problem. Consider the possibility that what they're teaching you might possibly not be correct. Call me crazy. You know, uh, even uh, Albert Einstein once said, if you keep doing the same thing, getting the same result, uh, it can drive it can drive you mad. Uh, hey there, uh, Sasha. Good morning, and God bless you. I'm gonna get started in a bit. Just waiting for a couple other people to to pop on. A few of the the usual suspects, I guess you could say. And uh, we're probably not gonna get a big crowd because this is uh, you know. Uh, like I said, you know, if I was prophesying, I'd probably have like 200 people watching the broadcast. But uh, anyhow, we're going we're gonna to talk about why uh, why God refuses to bless people. Because sometimes, a lot of us, we, we've, been, we've fallen into this deception where sometimes, and, and don't get me wrong, sometimes we're not, we haven't been blessed because it's not time yet. That God has a particular schedule for us and, and it's not the season for it yet. And some of us are told that, and we believe it year after year, and it's not really the case. Hey there, the, the monk. Um, hey there, uh, Taza G. And uh, so some people will think it's because it's just not the season. And sometimes that's, that's the reason. It's, it's just not your season to be blessed. It's just not your time. And that's possible. But for most of the church, most of the folks that I know, most of the folks that I deal with in ministry, the real reason that they're not blessed is that God is refusing to bless them. Good morning, Tiffany. How are you doing? Uh, and that's the harsh reality. Hey there, Slippery Geezer. That's a, that's a great nick. Uh, but for, for the most part, it's not because it's not their season. The, the most part, it's God is refusing to bless them. And that's a harsh thing to say. And people say, oh, you're being judgmental. You're right, I'm being judgmental. Uh, there's nothing wrong with being judgmental. You got to judge sometimes. Yeah, and I think I just spotted a Muslim. Goodbye, Muslim. Go worship your pedophile God. Uh, I can already tell. I'm, I'm feeling you, brother. I gotcha. Uh, good morning, Andrea. God bless you. Mustafa R. Uh, you're welcome to, uh, to the broadcast if you are a Muslim. If you start misbehaving, I will block you. There's just no other way. Uh, and so, like I was saying, a lot of people, they're not blessed because it's not their season yet. Or they're not blessed because of a whole number of reasons, which we're going to get into. But the main reason that most of us, uh, I block Muslims because I don't worship their nasty, stinking God. I block Muslims because I don't believe a 40-year-old man should marry a 6-year-old girl. Yeah, um, that's not what we're talking about today. It's funny how people start... 
you want you want to be the one to determine the direction of a broadcast at your own broadcast. Brother Man ain't having it. Uh, anyhow, let's get back on topic here. We're going to talk about why God refuses to bless you. Because for most of you, the truth is, God is refusing to bless you. It's not that it's not time yet. It's not that it's not your season. It was your season eight years ago. For some of you, it was your season 22 years ago. I'm going to lose some some uh, some viewers on this. For some of you, it's been your season for a long time. It's just that God has not blessed you because he's refusing to bless you because... because oh, you're not going to want to hear this. And some people say they're blessed, and, and some people appear to be blessed, and they're, 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 they're blessed. They seem blessed financially, but their life is full of drama and misery. And I've known some people, they've got some money, but oh my goodness, they are miserable. I don't know how they manage to do it. You know, it's like one of my friends who's a motivational speaker likes to say, uh, money, they, you know, people say money can't buy you happiness, but it's a lot more comfortable to cry in a Lamborghini than on a bicycle. Um, I thought that was funny. But the Bible says in uh, Proverbs 10, 22, the blessing of the Lord makes rich and adds no sorrow. Actually, money is not the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. If you love money, that's the problem. Having it, money itself is a tool. Money itself is nothing. Money is actually an idea. It's a piece of paper that is actually not worth anything. It's just worth something because they told you it's worth something. Money's not the root of all evil. It can't do anything by itself. It's like a gun. I can use that gun to shoot a deer and feed my family, or I can use that gun to go murder somebody or go rob somebody. The gun itself has no will. It can't do anything by itself. Same thing with money. I can use that money to feed my family. I can use it to go buy a hooker. One of those things is good. One of those things is bad. Was the money responsible? No. Of course, Jesus is more important than money for today. And we're not even talking about money. We're talking about being blessed. And, and see, that's another problem. Another reason why God refuses to bless some of you is that you think being blessed is just about money. And you're a shallow thinker. God can't trust you with anything. Well, yeah, you got to know what to do with it. Oh, goodness, people are starting to say some, some silly stuff. Um... Again, we're not just talking about money here. But because the saints are so shallow, they always think that blessing means money. And it, it, it isn't always. There's other things other than money. There are people out there that don't have a lot of money, but they're a lot more blessed than you are. Uh, I remember when I was reading up on, on the subject of homesteading, there was a guy who was talking about how uh, his neighbor drives fancier cars than him. His neighbor has a lot more income than him. But his neighbor has a huge mortgage. His neighbor has four car payments. His neighbor's got all kinds of debt. So uh, he ha even though his neighbor makes more money, has a bigger house and fancier cars, he actually has more net worth than, his, than his, uh, his neighbor. He's actually wealthier than his neighbor, though he doesn't look like it. We'll get to that in a bit. Uh, so he's more blessed than his neighbor grows his own food so he doesn't go to the grocery and buy food that's uh, genetically modified that'll give him cancer. He's growing his own food naturally so he's probably never going to get cancer. Which one of those two is more blessed? Exactly. That's kind of the point we're making. I, it's, it's funny how people people are saying the same thing I'm saying but it's like they're arguing with me. Um, so it's more than just money. The one man has more money but the other man is actually more blessed because he's not He's not a slave to debt. He has more freedom. He can spend more time with his family. He can actually be a father to his children. So on and so forth. So being blessed is more than money. But the saints get caught up on money because that's all they know. But let's get to the real reason why most people are not blessed. And, and, and just so we have no further silly argumentation here, when I say blessed, I mean in every sense of the word, not just money. Blessed in your health, blessed in your relationships, blessed in your marriage, blessed in your ministry, blessed in your job. Not just financially. 
because sometimes you can have a job that, that pays well. And I know a few people that they, they make pretty good money, but they hate their job because it's miserable because their boss is a jerk. Their coworkers are jerks. They don't get along with anybody. Everything's chaos. Everything's super stressful. And they're working themselves into an early grave simply because of the stress. So they appear to be blessed financially, but they're not blessed in here. They're not blessed in here. They're, by the time they're in their mid-40s, they're going to die of a massive heart attack from all the stress. Does that sound blessed to you? And it's not that being blessed means life is not going to have any problems. Being blessed means that when there is a problem, you can overcome it. When there is a problem, if the problem doesn't destroy you, because some of us can't even handle stress. Some of us can't handle a problem. Some of us can't handle affliction. Some of us can't handle persecution. Some of us are ready to, to throw a fit if people are talking about us. You're not blessed. Some of us can't handle anything. We can't take it. Some of us can't even take correction and we think we're blessed. Some of us can't take direction. A lot of us, you can't tell them, but most of the saints, you can't tell them anything. And they wonder why they're not blessed. The, re the main reason, that, uh, there's, there's several main, there's several reasons, primary reasons why uh, most of us in the church are not blessed. Because let's face it, as much as even these preachers who preach prosperity, most of the people in their church are broke. Year after year, decade after decade, still broke. They're broke and they're miserable. So it's not just they lack money, but they lack other things. It is unfortunately because of the way we are conditioned to live, we rely on money for so much of uh, what we do in life. Now I'm glad you, we've already started our little seedlings. We're getting ready to just plant some gardens. We're going to grow our own organic food. And the time will come when I will need almost no money at all to buy food. The only thing I'm going to buy is meat until I start hunting. I might still buy some meat, but I'd rather I'd rather uh, eat a deer than eat a cow that's been fed antibiotics and steroids. Somebody needs to hear this. Not that all of us can grow all our own food, but uh, even if you live in an apartment, you can grow something. You know, we're busy complaining about how we're not blessed, and, and there's so many ways to be blessed. Good morning, Joe. How are you doing? Uh, but most of us, God is refusing to bless us because we are poor stewards. You know, we want God to bless us with, with uh, more children. We're not even managing the one child we got. You got one kid that you're not even bringing them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, and you're wondering why God hasn't given you another one. You know, some people want a new car and they're not even taking care of the car they got. Haven't done an oil change in six months and think you can be trusted with a worldwide ministry. Stewardship, uh, poor stewardship is a big reason why so many of us are not blessed by God. Not just financially, in other ways. There's some people you can't trust them with anything in ministry. I know people they want to be a prophet to the nations. And I know of several prophetesses who think they're, they've got an international ministry and they're shacking up with some man. Like, wait a minute, you are living in fornication and you think you're a prophet to the nations? How is it that you hear God calling you to an international ministry and you don't hear him calling you out of sin? You wonder why God hasn't blessed your ministry. You're not even living for God. You're on your way to hell. My goodness, you know, it's, it's ridiculous. We are extreme, most of us are extremely poor stewards of anything that God puts in our hands. You know, some of us want to have a, a ministry. I've known people, they, they, they talk about they're a prophet to the nations or they're an apostle or this or that. And, and a lot of times, sometimes I, I like to ask them, okay, how many, how many sermons have you prepared? Most of the time the answer is none. It's like, wait a minute. You're an apostle. It's your job to lay down doctrine. It's your job to establish the church. And you don't even have one sermon prepared. You don't have any notes. 
you don't have any journals or notebooks or anything. It's you know, it's like the guy from uh, I hate using this example, but I, but it's it seems to be relevant. Well, if you don't speak English, please go to a uh, broadcast that speaks your language. Anyway, the uh, the guy from Led Zeppelin had said. Yeah, they want to establish themselves first, but it, it, it's, it's a little ridiculous. It's like, you know what most people who are, who are trying to be in ministry are like? They're like people who go on American Idol. And it's like the guy from Led Zeppelin, I forget his name, but he said, he said this about people that go on those shows. He said, these people don't want to make music. They just want to be famous. You don't want to make music. If you wanted to make music, you would have notebooks, uh, af notebook after notebook full of songs that you've written. You would already have a band. You would already you would already be doing it. You'd be playing in small clubs or playing somewhere. If you really wanted to make music, you don't want to make music. You just want to be famous, and that's the truth of a lot of us. A lot of us don't want to minister. They don't want to really want to preach. What they want to do is they want to be heard. They want to be seen, and they want to get paid. And you wonder why God hasn't blessed your ministry because you're motivated right. We do so many things for so many selfish reasons. Uh, my computer is looking something up here. Well, uh, the Bible tells us in Proverbs uh, chapter 15, verse 8, and also the same thing in 21, 27, that the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination. Think about that. And a lot of times we're doing things with wicked motives. We don't see it as wicked, but you're being selfish. You're being wicked. You're doing something to serve your ego. You're doing something to serve your pride. You're doing something to serve your self-interest. You're not really pursuing the kingdom. And it's an abomination to God. And it says the prayer of the upright is delight. And the other one says that uh, the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination. How much more so when he brings it with a wicked mind? Or as some translations say, with an ulterior motive. You know, we're, we're going into, a lot of us go into ministry because we want to get paid and we want to be famous or we want to be heard, we want to be seen. We got triple A pride. We want attention, approval, and admiration. And to God, it's an abomination. And it's even more so because of those motives. So a lot of us, God refuses to bless us because our motive isn't right. And I know there's some preachers out there, my, my old pastor actually taught this once, and I think somebody somebody called him on it, because he didn't teach it again, that you can give to a prophet with a bad motive and God will still bless you, which is ridiculous. It's contrary to what scripture actually says. A lot of us, the, the other reason why we, we are not blessed by God, and this is going to make some people mad, I might lose some followers over this big deal, um, for a lot of us, the main reason that God refuses to bless you is that we're selfish. Most of the saints I deal with are selfish. I've got 60,000 followers uh, roughly on, on one Twitter profile. I've got 26,000 followers on the other pro Twitter profile. Uh, take a guess how many I actually give to the ministry. Maybe two or three every month. 90,000 people follow me. Maybe two or three actually uh, do anything for the ministry at all. They're selfish. In fact, all I'd have, all I would have to do if I want to bring this uh, this this scope down to like one viewer is uh, is raise an offering. And the funny thing is, I think we've raised an offering uh, three times in sixteen years. So you hear me raising all that's a rare rare thing. But people will believe. We already lost some people when I started talking about selfishness. Um, because that, that and, and you see the same thing. All I got to do is I start prophesying to everybody. I guarantee you, we get like 500 people on the scope. You know, I only have about 200 people following me on Periscope. Immediately, people will start telling their friends. and Because it's about feeding our selfishness. Yeah, people always want a word. They always want a word, or they want prayer. They want they they want uh, some advice. They want some counseling. They, you know, I posted something the other day about how many people would be interested in one-on-one -on -one mentoring. A lot of people were interested. 
only one of them, and it was actually you, Andrew, who said anything about uh, what would, you know, uh, inquiring as to what would be required of you. Why? Because the rest of them are selfish. They're looking to get something from you without uh, giving anything back. And I, I gotta be the one, I hate to be the one to break the news to you, but the Bible says the muzzle not the ox that treads out the corn. This is the dynamic we have in the church, and, you, and, and people wonder why they're not blessed. And, and I'm going to tell you, a lot of, a lot, most of the people that, that uh, yeah, exactly, nobody wants to put in any effort either. That's another reason. But again, that goes back to bad stewardship. We don't put any effort in anything. You know, you're not gonna, I almost want to call myself the hard, hardest working man on Periscope. I, I, I've preached about 300 times in the last year and a half. Now my cat's channel already has almost 200 videos. Most of those, most of those are from the last like three or four months. Now I don't get invited to preach at churches or conferences, so I'll get on here and preach as much as I can. Now some people say don't do that because you're giving people too much. Maybe I am, but I'm determined to be a good, a good steward of what God gave me to do. I'll preach every day if I can. But most of us, most of us are not blessed by God because we're selfish. All you got to do is, you know, it's the same thing. You know, I go on Facebook, if I start a prophecy thread, I'll get a whole list of people. And it seems like I got a good flow going. I, I just prophesied to like 30 people in a row in a course of like 20 minutes. Then, uh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, people will say that. Uh, a lot of people who do videos and stuff like that, they will say you shouldn't do them too often uh, because then people get used to you and people don't appreciate it, which uh, there's some truth to that. Um, when you give people a lot for free, they don't value it. They don't. It's, a, it's, just, it's just a truth because people get used to getting something out of you without giving anything back. Do that in a relationship becomes abusive, and uh, and and you see this, you know, the, the same people that wouldn't dare disrespect the pimp preacher who won't do it, don't give you anything for free. Yeah, pick a preacher, make one up, Joyce Meyer, Benny Hinn, the rest of them. You watch their program. What you're going to see is 15 minutes of preaching at the most, and it might not even be good or biblical preaching. But you're going to get about 15 minutes of it. Most of the program, they're either going to be asking you for money or trying to sell you something. And then at the end of the preaching portion, they're going to tell you exactly how, if you like this message, here's how you can buy the rest of it. You don't get anything free from Joyce. You don't get anything free from Benny or Creflo or, or uh, T.D. Jakes or Joel Austin. You don't get anything free from them. You get 15, 20 minutes of preaching on the program and you get to buy the rest. And as a consequence, people actually value what they have to say. And, uh, my goodness, uh, you know, and you'd think people would clue in to the fact that, that they're, you know, that that's how that works. It's, it's all about getting something out of you. But at the same time, people who are fed up with the, with the preacher is always asking after everybody's money, uh, the one who isn't after your money, the one who's actually serving you, the one that's actually ministering, the one, you know, the one that's, uh, you know, the one that's basically, you know, pastoring a couple thousand people over the internet, uh, that one, you know, it's like your Rodney Dangerfield, which I had a tie on. I do like Rodney Dangerfield. I get no respect. You know, he fools around with this tie like this. I get no respect. Uh, as, oh man, you know, like, uh, I've had it happen with multiple people. You, you've been ministering to them for months. You've been counseling them for months. You've been prophesying to them for months. They even got 35 prophetic words out of you. And the one day that you say, um, I have to go, or I got, you know, I'll be back later. I can't deal with this right now. They will flip out on you. They will flip out on you and they, oh man, it's almost, it's surprising they don't cuss you out. Some of them do. Or the minute you say something they don't like, 
the truth they don't want to hear, all of a sudden you're a false prophet. All of a sudden you're, you know, you're this and you're that. They got all kinds of nasty things to say about you and they're ready to disrespect you. And then that person wonders why they're not blessed. You are not going to be blessed by God while you're disrespecting a real man of God. You're not. Well, a lot of people want their ears tickled. And people do. It's not even just about ear tickling. Some people want a real word from God, but they want it. They they want it without putting anything back, and that is not scriptural. And I don't understand, folks, how how some of y'all can do that. I don't let anybody get away with being nice to me. Somebody does something for me, I immediately want to do something for them because it's right. You know. Uh, if somebody's ministry has been a blessing to me, I either I either try to give them some money or I don't have any money. I'm going to promote their YouTube channel. I'm going to promote their, their Facebook page. Anything they got going on online, I'm going to promote it. That was part of how I built a big uh, following on Twitter. My first couple of years on Twitter, most of what I did was promote other people's work. Because I was in the comics industry, I was doing a web comic about a rabbit who wants to be a superhero. It was kind of silly, but it got a little popular for a little while. Made a little bit of money off it. But the whole reason why I had a, a big Twitter following was because I kept promoting everybody else's stuff. And what I found was the vast majority of them never reciprocated. Because like most people, they were selfish. But what happened was the people in their queue that were following them saw that I kept promoting their stuff. They kept seeing my name. So they came and checked me out. And so those selfish people who would never uh, tweet anything of mine, who would never promote anything of mine, never mention me on their website or in their podcast or whatever, here we are five years later, they still got 800 followers on Twitter. I got 60,000. Not that that means a whole lot, because a lot of times you get a lot of followers that are robots and a lot of followers that are... Uh, you get a lot of followers that are just people trying to promote something. I don't even follow people back on Twitter anymore. Because most of the people now following me are just people who are trying to, you know, they're, they're trying to get me to follow back. And if I follow back, they will immediately unfollow. Because they're just trying to build up their follower list. Uh, I was talking about Twitter. Um, but it's a principle here. You want God to bless you, you got to stop being selfish. Because I got a lot of people, you know, I got all kinds of people... And then sometimes the most selfish ones are even the ones, like, you have some, some folks that say, well, you know, uh, I can't bless your ministry because I don't have any money. There are plenty of ministries out there that I can't afford to, to financially bless them. I bless them in other ways. I, I'll, uh, I'll promote their YouTube channel. Like I said, I'll promote whatever it is they got. I'll promote it. I tell people about it. I, I put it out on Facebook. I put it out on Twitter. I don't use Instagram, but if I did, I'd put it there too. As a, the truth is, a lot of us, uh, we're just selfish because even when we can't bless somebody financially, we can bless them some way. When was the last time there was a ministry or somebody that you that, that has been a blessing to you and you spent a couple hours praying for them? The answer for most of us is never. Because the truth is, we don't care. The truth is, we just want what we want. The truth is, most of us just want to get something. Most of us don't intercede for other people. That's just the plain hard truth. You don't got to like me. But that's the truth. Most of us don't intercede for other people. You want to see God bless you, stop being selfish. If, if you can't bless other people financially, bless them with your prayer. Bless them with some intercession. Go to God on their behalf. There is a ministry that has blessed you. Promote their broadcast. Promote their YouTube channel. Get, give them some word of mouth advertising if you can't give them anything else. Most won't even do that. What I, what I actually find, I've actually had people have the nerve like the other night, I think it was last night, uh, I posted a thread in our, our Facebook group uh, to post your Bible questions so that I would address them in the broadcast. This person was like, uh, basically said, uh, I want you to to answer my question here, type your, your your answer instead. Why? Because she didn't want to watch the broadcast because uh, I would be getting something out of it. I would get one whole periscope view out of this person. And to her, that was too much. Ridiculous. 
This is how selfish people are. You want an answer to your question, but you can't even click on a link. It's ridiculous. But this is how people are. A lot of them, they won't watch the broadcast. They won't watch your YouTube channel because you're get, never mind sharing your YouTube channel. Never mind sharing your videos. Never mind tweeting your videos. They won't even watch them because you're going to get one whole view out of them. Because they've got this mentality that the preacher is not supposed to get anything out of what he's doing. Not even a YouTube view. Not even a Periscope view. Never mind, they don't got a problem that if, if I had answered her question on Facebook... Mark Zuckerberg and all his buddies get to make money off it because there's advertisements running on the side of, of every page on Facebook. So the same person who doesn't have a problem with this Illuminati Satanist guy making as much money as he wants off Facebook doesn't even want you getting a YouTube view. And what you got to understand, there's a day of accountability for that. There's a day of reckoning. There's a day that all of us are going to have to stand before God and explain why we did this. Telling me that I'm not too scared of, of the day of judgment when it comes to stuff I've done. I worry sometimes about what I could have done. A lot of us, it, we're going to have to answer why, why it was we didn't have a problem with worldly people, with Satanist people, with people who are not saved, people who are against God, who actually are against the church, making as much money as they possibly can off us when we post on Facebook because every time you post a thread on Facebook every time you comment you're, you're generating traffic for Facebook which generates revenue for them that's how they make their money from the advertising nothing necessarily wrong with that but there is something wrong when we as the church don't have a problem with that but we have a problem with the, with the preacher getting a YouTube view never mind sharing his broadcast never mind sharing the, the, the video Never mind even having a kind word to say about the brother or the sister, as the case may be. You know, I, I know somebody right now, they, they run a website where they, they uh, all they, most of what they do is they prophesy to people. People can sign up and get a prophetic word. They don't always because, you know, sometimes God don't say anything. And they've done this for years. Right now she needs a, a transmission for her car. Her and her team have ministered to thousands and thousands of people over the last few years. There's no way she should need, she, there's no way that she should not be able to afford a transmission for her car. Because all, and the reason why she doesn't have the money to do it is because the thousands of people that she ministers to, the thousands of people who are always bugging her for a prophetic word, most of them won't support her ministry. They're that selfish. Goodness, if if, uh, if each one of them gave her a dollar a month, she can go buy a new car. Never mind a transmission. But this is how selfish we are in the church. We're that selfish. We're selfish to the point where we even become demanding to them. To a person who's ministering for free, don't don't tell me otherwise. I remember when I was running a prophetic school that was free of charge on on Pal Talk. I uh, did it for a couple of years, and my goodness, people were they, they were rude, they were demanding, they were disrespectful. One of them wanted me was demanding that I uh, do the class live in person. That I should rent out a building and and you know with a nice classroom and and. Uh, have all this different equipment to make the school better because she wanted to to fly in from another part of Texas to come to the classes because they were so good and I'm sitting there thinking you can afford to fly in every week you got it like that but you want me to rent out a building and do all this and you haven't sewn one dime into the ministry This is how people are. Not surprisingly, she's got all, she's well off financially, but she's got all kinds of drama going on in her life. All kinds of misery in her family. So she's not blessed because the blessing of God makes rich and adds no sorrow with it. And we wonder why we're not blessed. We're, 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 we're like that. And the, the people we treat the worst are, are 
it's usually the preacher that gets treated the worst as far as the one, at least not the big preacher. The big preacher gets treated like a king. Because let me tell you, when you're a pimp, everybody loves you. The guy that's, that you can't get a prophecy unless you give $40, that guy's doing great. You ain't getting in this prophecy line unless you got some money in your hand. Because they've taught the church and, and people will even defend them and say, well, the Bible says you can't come before the prophet empty-handed. No, it doesn't. There is no passage of scripture that says anything remotely like that. I'm 42 years old. I've been studying the word of God since I was six. There is no part of the Bible that says you can't come before the, the prophet empty-handed. The closest it comes to that is 1 Samuel chapter 9, where Saul and his slave are looking for, for a lost donkey. And his slave says, well, there's a man in this town nearby. He's an honorable man. Uh, he's a prophet. And everything he says surely comes to pass. And Saul says, well, what will we bring? I don't, I don't have any money. I don't have a present for the man of God. And then his servant says, well, I have a, a fourth of a shekel of silver. We'll give that to him to, to tell us our way. And then people say, well, that means you've always got to bring money to the man of God, not necessarily. And the money they were bringing him is equal to roughly about a dollar. It's pocket change. That's what they were going to give him. Because after all, it was the slave that had some money on him. And in general, slaves are usually poor. Go figure. Um, and when they get there, Samuel threw a party for Saul. Spent a lot more than a dollar on the party. Uh, but it's supposed, this is supposed to be a two-way street. Now, while the Bible doesn't require you to always bring some money to the prophet, to, to, you, to, it doesn't say you can't come before the prophet empty-handed, it is dead wrong to constantly make demands of a prophet and always look to the prophet for a prophetic word. You always want prayer. You always want advice. You always want counseling. And you don't support their ministry in any way, shape, or form. You want to see God bless you? Stop being selfish. Stop doing for other people. Stop just looking out for number one. You want to see God bless you instead of uh, constantly posting in Facebook groups that you want a prophetic word? How about you You go through the members list of that Facebook group, whether it's my group or somebody else's, and you start praying for people. Start praying for somebody other than you and yours. Because that's what most of us do. We pray for ourselves, we pray for our family, we pray for our friends, and that's it. You can't afford to, to give to a ministry, pray for the leader. Pray for their team. Turn your plate down for a day or two. Most of us won't do that. I mean, I'd love to ask the question, when was the last time uh, you went on a fast on behalf of a uh, of a leader in the church. The answer for the vast majority of us is never. And then we wonder why God doesn't bless us. The main reason is we're so selfish. Now I know people like to, to, to quote Luke 6.38 where it says, Give and it shall be given to you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men, uh, shall men give unto your bosom for the same measure you meet with, uh, with all, it should be measured to you again. It was mostly about human relationships, but uh, it applies to, to the subject of giving. We, we, and it's not just about money. It includes money. Uh, but we don't give our time. We don't give our, in our prayer. We don't give in, in the area of fasting for others. Not so much as a kind word. You know, you look at a prophetic ministry. Um, over the last uh, almost two years now on Facebook, I've probably delivered twelve or 13,000 prophecies to other people. If I had to guess, maybe 10 people have prophesied to me. Don't care a whole lot about that, but it's not it's an observation, not a condemnation. I'm trying to help y'all. You want God to bless you, you want God to stop refusing to bless you, stop being selfish. Because that's a, that's for most of us, that's the that's the that is the number one reason. 
Because a selfish person can't be trusted. A selfish person is not going to do what's right with the blessing. You give resources to a selfish person, the only person they're looking out of is, is for themselves. And Jesus himself said, if any man would be my disciple, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. The prime ethic of Christianity is self-denial. And most of us, we want the blessing of God so that we can drive a better car or be in a fancier house. And there's nothing wrong with those things in and of itself. But the last thing we're thinking of is anybody else. For most of us, the last thing we're really thinking of is, uh, is how we're going to benefit the kingdom. You know, the, most of the saints I talk to when they talk about, you know, uh, things that they're after, goals they have in life, they want a big house on a good sized piece of land, they want at least a few acres, and, it, and so, but it's all about them, or it's all about their family, and that's it. I only know a few people who talk about, you know, wanting to have a large piece of land so they can have other people live on it. They can create a place of refuge where people can go to in times of emergencies so they can grow enough food for a whole lot of people. Not that many people think that way. You want God to bless you in every sense of the word? Start thinking of others. Start thinking of your brethren. Start thinking of what can I do? First of all, look at the resources you already have and start asking yourself the question, what can I do with what I have right now to benefit the kingdom? How can I benefit my brothers and sisters in Christ with what I already have? Because I'm in kind of the same boat a lot of you are in. I don't got a whole lot of money. I can't, you know, go give somebody a thousand dollars. I can't do that right now. But I can pray for people. I can uh, seek God on their behalf and deliver a word from God. I can preach to them. I can teach them. I can train them. I can mentor them. And so I do that. Evaluate the resources you presently have. Get out a piece of paper. I don't want to talk about just thinking about this because most of us just thinking ain't going to do anything. Even in business, they, they, one of the things that they've observed, uh, studies have been done, people who write down goals are three times likely, I think it's two or three times more likely to achieve them. The mere act of writing it down moves you a step closer to actually doing it. And similarly, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to get out some paper, get a pen or a pencil and start writing down the resources you presently have at your command, whether it's, whether it's money, whether it's uh, uh, your house, whether it's uh, you, the connections you have, your followers on social media, your friends, um, you know, your time, your various abilities, your expertise. Make a list. Be, be comprehensive. Then take other sheets of paper. On each sheet of paper, address each resource. And spend some time prayerfully considering what you can do with each resource resource how can you make the most of it because there's a lot of us that we'd be more blessed just by making better use of what we already have now, I, I know some people are they're practically like you know, I hate to say sitting on a gold mine but it's almost like they're sitting on a gold mine um, you got some folks that you know they they think they're not blessed in one area they you know they got a big backyard where they can start their own organic garden immediately let the very least bless the the health of their family there's no real reason not to do it there isn't where's the excuse and i've got spinal cord injuries and fibromyalgia and some issues that cause my right leg to go numb so I, on bad days i gotta use a cane to make sure i don't fall over and I'm still going to plant this organic garden. I'm still going to build a greenhouse. It's going to take me longer to do it than it would have if I was healthy. But I'm not making excuses. I'm going to get it done somehow, some way. 
A lot of times when God is waiting for the, the blessings for you to finally start using what he already gave you. You know, you, you feel like you're called to a ministry. You already got a Bible, right? Most of you do. If you don't, go to the library and use the Bible there. There's no excuse. When I didn't have a concordance, guess where I went? I went to the library and used the concordance there. Or I borrowed it from the library. Heck, today you don't even need to do that. You got the internet. You got Google. You don't have a concordance? I'll give you a quick Bible study tip right here. You uh, do a Google search where you, let's say, uh, you type John chapter 7, KJV, Strong's, as in Strong's Concordance, and then the word God Rules. That will pull up a website called GodRules.net, and it will pull up John chapter 7 with the Strong's numbers on each word. So you can actually click on each word and get the Strong's, uh, Strong's Concordance definition of the word. Don't even need to buy a concordance these days. If you're called to a ministry, you better be doing stuff like that. Start studying. Start start uh, become a better student of the word. Because some people want it, they want to have a great international ministry, don't even know the word. How are you going to uh, and you think God is not looking at this, you think God uh, 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 you know, stewardship, bad stewardship and selfishness are the primary reasons that, that most of us are not blessed. Make better use of what you already got. If you're called to ministry, you better get out that Bible and start studying. Preach to yourself if you have to. Preach to the mirror, but preach. And if you do that, I can't guarantee you that God's going to bless you immediately. But he will once you once he can trust you. Especially now, I mean, we've had, we've had this whole generation of people who did nothing but squander the blessings of God. The whole prosperity movement was entirely selfish. Entirely selfish. Now you got you got churches that you know they're taking in sixty million dollars a year and don't and they got all kinds of land and property and they don't have. A gigantic greenhouse or organic garden to to uh, to feed the church. This ought not to be so. You got the resources to do it. And some will say, "Well, God, did not, that's not part of our mission." Well, find somebody in your congregation whose mission it is to do it. Somebody in your city's got a calling for it. Somebody's got a desire, burning desire in their heart to feed people. But we don't do that because the truth is we don't care. That's the real reason we don't do this stuff. We don't care. It goes back to the whole selfishness thing. If you want to be blessed by God, make better use of the resources you already have. Do what I said with the pen and paper. Start planning it out. And then start giving yourself goals. Don't have to be big goals. You can make some small goals of what you can do with your resources this week that'll be different from what you're already doing. Not out of a sense of obligation, but because you love God, because you love his people. I don't do this because I have to. I could be doing other things with my time. I do it because I care about his people, because God gave me a mission to teach his people the difference between the holy and the profane and to cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. I do it because I love him and I love his people. And there it really is, is the crux of the whole thing, is love. You know, it's like Jesus said, love is the fulfilling of the law. A lot of us love to preach out of Deuteronomy 28 about being blessed in the city and blessed in the field. And heck, Fred Hammond made a song about it like almost 20 years ago. We're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field, blessed when we come and when we go. We pull down every stronghold, sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated, we are blessed. And it sounds so nice, and, and we're singing this year after year. But we haven't fulfilled Deuteronomy 28. To receive those blessings in Deuteronomy 28, you've got to fulfill the law. Because the word we're not under the law. 
But in Romans chapter 8, verse 4, we're told that the work of Christ and the Holy Spirit is to cause the righteousness of the law to be revealed in us. So even though we're not under the law, we should still be committing the righteousness thereof. As Jesus said, the, the, law, the entire law and the prophets is summed up in, in two commandments, to love God and to love your neighbor as yourself. Now, who is your neighbor? Your neighbor is the one who has compassion on you. That preacher who's, uh, who's preaching preaching to you and preaching right, the one who's praying for you, the one who's, who, who's prophesying to you, the one who's counseling you, the one who's mentoring you, the one who has, actually has time for you, he's your neighbor. If nobody's your neighbor, that brother's your neighbor. And the truth is, most of us have not walked in that kind of love. That's why we don't, that's why we're selfish. Real love is not selfish, as the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians. And what I'd like all of you to do, in addition to all that writing that stuff down, is I'd like for you to, uh, to take some time in prayer to first repent for being selfish if you've been selfish. And to ask God to really pour out his love in your heart that you would not only love him, but love his people. And you find all that other stuff pretty easy to do. I hope this was helpful. i got to get going because i got to go buy some groceries. Uh, meanwhile, folks, God bless you and God keep you.